Hello everyone and welcome back to another 18715 programming tutorial and today we're going to be teaching you how to do servos and how to program them and everything in between. Let's go! Hello everyone, before we actually begin our coding of the servos, we first have to understand like what is a servo, right? So servos have two modes. The first mode being continuous, and a continuous servo basically means that it can spin and you're just giving it power, kind of like a motor, right? And it'll spin a full 360 degrees. However, there is also a different alternative, which is called servo. Servo is basically able to set certain positions around. However, a servo does not have a full range of 360 degrees. Most servos like this one only have about 300 degrees. So there's a certain 60 degrees that the servo cannot travel. However, there are some very expensive, good alternatives to servos. If you do have a budget, you can get pretty close to 360 degrees. So how do we change modes from continuous and normal servo? Well, we're gonna need something like this. This is called, um, from GoBuilder, just a um, servo programmer. These are fairly cheap, go around for $10, and I'll leave a link in the description where you can get it. So the first thing we wanna do is very important is the white string has to line up with this S. And then we're gonna take our battery and plug it in. So the very first thing that we should notice is there are this switch right here. It's um, C would stand for continuous and S would stand for servo. So let's say we wanna to go to servo right now, right? So we would stay in this S and then we click this P button. This P stands for program. So we're gonna program our servo to be a servo so let's program and then this s button is basically like a test button so if we want to automatically test the bounds of the servo we're going to click this so as you can see it is testing the bounds of the servo and it's basically seeing its parameters and as you can see right here there it stops right here and only goes to here so we can see roughly a 60 degrees where it cannot rotate and if we were to go and click this and uh, the s button again it would set to manual testing mode so we are manually or we can use these buttons up here to manually test the bounce so at this p button if we click this on in your code it'd be uh, position 0 0.5 and if we click this left button where it says l this position would equal to zero and then if we click the right button this position would equal one. So we have zero, 0 0.5, and one. So now let's go to continuous. So let's quickly just turn this off and plug it back in. And now we're gonna turn the switch and click the program button. So now this is in continuous mode. So a thing we can do is click this S button and this will go into um, continuous automatic mode. So you can see how it goes a full 360. So we're gonna set this to manual mode. And if we click the L button, it will rotate continuously towards the left side. And you can see how it will constantly rotate. And if we click this P button, it's gonna pause it. And if we click this R button, it's gonna spin to the right side. So this is basically what a servo programmer is to do. Um, you can use this to test some bounds and get an understanding how the servo will spin. And it's also very useful because we need to be able to switch modes of the servo. Okay, so let's configure a servo. So I'm gonna go to edit, control hub, control hub, and you're gonna click servos. And here you can, um, so like I said earlier about the um, servo programmer, you have to know which one your servo is set to. So if it was continuous or servo, you would just choose that one. Okay, so let's start actually coding a servo. So the first thing we wanna do is just do public. So now this is very important. You have to know if you're using CR servo or servo, because if it's servo, then you're just gonna do this. But if it's CR servo, then you're gonna do this, right? So let's just call this servo. And then in here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do, uh, we can call it servo dot, uh, is equal to hardware map. 
what you get. And like I said again, you have to know if you're using CR servo or normal servo, so we're using server class. And then you have to remember what you named it. So I named it servo, so we're gonna put servo here. And in this loop, what I want to do is just do some basic, very simple controls. So we're just gonna do if gamepad one dot a is equal uh, we're just gonna make it do servo dot set power is equal to uh, one and then if gamepad one dot b is servo dot set power is negative one and to make sure that it will stop after we're gonna keep this inside the loop but outside the if statement we're gonna do servo dot set power is equal to zero and this will basically allow it to when we click a or b it will spin but then right after we stop clicking it it will stop uh, i changed this off camera but i'll show you guys right now so first thing i added was teleop because you need it so you can actually test the op mode and the second thing was while loops because if you use if statement it's very jittery and the servo kind of moves very awkwardly so with while loops it makes it very okay, so let's show you in action so when i click a it will spin I think this way, right? Yeah, that way. And then I stop, it will release. And then B, it will spin this way. And then I stop, it will release. Okay, I just want to show you some cool um, interaction. So right now, what I just did was I used the servo programmer to change this. And I was about to um, uh, configure it so that it would be servo. But I, I just was wondering what happens if I click B and A. So what it should do is since it's set power, it's going to spin like this. However, on the servo programmer, I click the P button. So right now it's locked in at 0.5. So if I were to spin it, the servo will know that it's um, no longer on the position of 0.5 and it will move back to it. So if I spin it, it's gonna move back. And also keep in mind that um, I'm giving it power. However, it's not spinning 360, even though I'm holding this button, it's just staying there and it's, it can't move in this like 60 degree of angle. So just something I wanted to show you guys. Okay, so now I wanna show you guys how to do a servo. So you guys have finished, um, what's it called? Configuring your robot and uh, programming your servo. So let's code it accordingly. So we're gonna do public servo and we're just gonna call this servo2. And we're going to import this class. And then we can do servo2 is equal to hardware map. We get servo.class and I name it servo. It's the same thing as last time. So I'm actually going to comment this code out. So that way it doesn't really interfere with much. So now what's going to happen is I'm going to, in these, I'm going to change this to if statement because we're no longer utilizing, um, we're no longer needing to hold stuff down because uh, set position is basically a toggle and it will just move there and stay there. So let, we're going to do servo.setPosition. sorry servo two dot set position and we're going to give it a value you can go from ne basically negative one to one but let's keep it simple and let's just start at zero and we're going to tell this one to go to set position and let's tell this to go to one for your semicolons and yeah that's pretty much it so let's just do b and it moved to one now let's go to A, it should move to zero. And it does it perfectly. So in today's video, you learned a lot about servos. And in the next video we're gonna be teaching you, we're gonna be teaching you the basics of autonomous. So until next time, peace.